And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, Tom Vassell here, and today we're taking a look at Valley of the Kings Afterlife. Now this is a complete small little deck building game, but it's also a sequel to Valley of the Kings, and they also can be combined. So because of that, I'm not going to be explaining how to play this game. Go watch my Valley of the Kings review if you'd like to see that. Instead, I'm going to be talking about the cards in this game and a little bit about how they combine here it is. You'll find that the rule books for the game are almost identical to both of them, and you get the same starter cards in this game. This is a complete game, remember, so then you can also combine it and make a five or six player game, something I don't recommend because I've already thought that Valley of the Kings was really good with three players, and four players is fine, but why add those two extra players in? But you can if you want to. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at some of the new cards for the set. And the way this game works is the same as the original game, but if you want to mix them, you can use like all the red cards from one set or the red cards from another set. So if I want to mix some of each, I can, as long as you have one set of each color. You can also take one of each card from the sets, both of them, put them together in some big mega set. And there you can play that you need to get uh, both different cards. There's different ways to play. And one of the ways you can play is where you can get a ton of points because you get a ton of different things. But anyhow, let's take a look at these cards. Um, this is the Mummification set where there's three different cards. Here you can entomb a card and every opponent with at least one card in their draw deck draws a card. Or you can take a card that the person to your left selects, which as the game goes by, gets more and more powerful. My favorite card from this set though is the Grain Hook. I like this one because you reveal the top card of the stock and you can buy it for two less than its cost. And then if you don't, sacrifice it. I don't know, there's something about that. You can get stuff early. This really helps out when you get to set three cards because they're cheaper in that regard. Then we have the jewelry set here. The bracelet where you can discard three cards, take a card from the bottom, entomb a card from the pyramid, but then you have to sacrifice a set card from your tomb. So this is cool if there's a specific card you want and you have a set card that you don't care about. The necklace, entomb the top card of your deck. If it's a starter card, you can do a second one. Here, the next card, this is my favorite card from the jewelry set. The next card you play this turn has double gold value. So this will double one. You, so you get a three gold, like you get this one in a necklace combined, and you, that's six gold that you have to spend. A very useful combo, and if the ring shows up early, it's one I like to buy. Then we have the Offering Chapel. That lets everyone entomb the top card of the discard pile. Discard any number of cards from your hand, and you draw cards equal to that, so you can clear through your hands. Set aside some cards from one hand, add them to the next hand. Search your discard pile, put a card into your hand, and then put a card from your hand into an opponent's tomb, and then entomb a card from your hand or discard pile. This one's useful because you can put junky cards, as those starter cards, in your opponent's tomb, and then get a good card from your hand or discard pile. So you can play a card the previous turn and then entomb it with the burial chamber. It's also worth three money, I like that. Then we have the dagger. This is the weapon set here. And everyone gets the top card of the boneyard. So cards that can be gone forever may come back with the dagger. The ax is one of the few, like really in the other person's face type card, where everyone has to discard the highest cost card in their hand or here. When your opponent entombs a card, you can discard the sling, and entomb a card costs three or less. These are okay cards. The spear is better. If the top card of the boneyard costs five or less, entomb it. Another card that lets you get things out of the boneyard. Or here, take a set card that is not of the same set as any card in your tomb, and entomb it. So that's very interesting. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's odd because you're only going to be able to use the bow a few times effectively, because eventually you will have... Um, the cards of the different sets in your tomb, but it can help you get a very specific card if you want to. And then this one is my favorite, just discard a set card and take a card. You know, just very simple, but it's also for gold. Then we have the tomb art set. Everyone discards a card or, or sacrifices a card or discards two. Entomb a card in play, very powerful. Entomb a level three card from your hand or discard pile. Set aside a card and take the top card of the boneyard. Do that as often as you want. And then the cards you set aside, you sacrifice. You're trading cards for cards from the boneyard. 
Sacrifice the top card of your discard pile. Take a card. Select an opponent. That opponent can take a card with the lowest cost. You take the card with the highest cost. This is one of my favorite cards, too. I just really like the idea of this one. And I also like the idea of this one. This will entomb any number of starter cards. Now, this one's fun. At the beginning of the game, you get this, and you can really clear your deck out of these starter cards. Now, you got to be careful, because if you do it too quickly, you'll find that you don't have any good cards to entomb as time goes by. Or, I mean, you, you have a tiny deck, which isn't very useful. But it's still one that I think a lot of people will take. It really culls the deck down. Then we have some more unique cards. Take a card, and then you stick this card back in the pyramid. Draw a card. Put this on top of someone else's discard pile. And then they put a set card on top of your discard pile. So there's another negative one. Put a card into, in play into your hand. Put the next card you take or buy this turn into your hand. Discard four cards. Take two cards and then entomb the top card of the stock, which could be amazing. It's random, but you never know, and it's also five gold, but it does cost 10. So these are the cards in this set. So I guess the first question would be, if you could only buy one of these two sets, Vassal, which would you buy? Mm, I don't want the cult of the new to affect me too much, but I think I like Valley of the King's Afterlife. I felt like there were a couple fewer cards that were negative towards your opponent, and there were more cards that let you pull stuff from the Boneyard, which is something I like. Um, there's just some cards in here. I love the doubling the money card. So I think there's more favorite cards of mine in here, but it's not a hard sell. I could play either one. I do like owning both. I like mixing and matching the sets. It's not that difficult to do. I just keep the cards from one side or one half of the box of cards from the other side, and then just pull a set of red cards or blue cards. I don't do the half sets thing too much. For one, it would... I think it's good that there's two copies of each card in there. It gives, you know, if your opponent gets a card, you still might have a chance to get that same cool card. And, or you might be able to pull off some combos, but it does give you variety because there's lots of different combinations of the different colors that you can take. So this is a good addition. It doesn't do anything majorly different. You can buy this straight up as an expansion, and it doesn't add any major new things. It's, in fact, like I said, the rule books were pretty much identical. It plays the same way. It just provides different cards that are nice, easy to understand cards, and a lot of variety to what is already an excellent deck building game. I still don't think the five and six player part is worth it, but if you want more cards and just some variety from game to game, definitely check out Valley of the Kings Afterlife. Dice Tower Judgment into my collection. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Ah! Boo? Boo.